this, all of this, this movie, everything, it, it's not telling my story, it's telling the story. Because it's a story we need to tell. It's not bullshit. It all really happened. It, this is not smoke and mirrors. Like, it's not. It really happened to me. Where do you stand on all of this? Um. Like, what's your stance? What's your take? I think the most important thing for me is to tell it as truthfully as possible and to tell everyone's side of the story and not just, um... Yeah. are hopping little bunnies all my friends are aliens baby a lot of i mean the biggest reason why i wanted to see this movie made is to actually set the story straight i don't want people in my hometown to think that i'm crazy because i'm not i'm not cool all right i got some chords i want to try out i just need to relight my blunt <laughs> that does drive people away because they're like, holy shit, Matthew, you are a fucking handful. And I get that. I support it. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> All right. So I was working on a few chords. I want to show them to you. Sure. I just want the truth to be out there. I really do. It's for those guys. It's for Charlie. It's for Sarah and Caleb and Jacob and everyone who's ever been a part of Matthew and Arrogancy. That's why it's so important to me to release this. Hopefully when Matthew sees this, he doesn't think that people are against him, but he sees that people love him and think he's an amazing person, but want to see his character change in some ways. Hey, got something. I had a dream that you It makes me a farm. <laughs> it puts my taxes way low. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ah! <laughs> 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 
I was thinking about uh, trying out milk, milk and tea. Milk and tea? Yeah, I'm yeah. for that. I'm, I'm cool with that. Did you get your harmonies down for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna... I actually worked on some, some higher stuff this week. For that oh, song. really? Yeah. You wanna try it out? Yeah, yeah, it's like a... <clears throat> kinda starts with the... the glowing. And it's just a higher, like a... It's like a... Glowing. Oh, like that. wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, and then it goes mad high and... Uh, we'll, we'll see if that happens on stage. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, let's try it out. So, okay. yeah, yeah. What's that line? In, uh, in that moment. Yeah, in that moment. Ready? One, two, ready. I dream I you were home tonight. The earth flowing to the ground. In that dream, you broke some ghosts. Arcs came shooting out. You heard a song lead by a loud His name was Kingdom Bright. Turn your ears into ours. Suddenly you're stung by me. In that moment you were start making music together, Matthew was one of the most devout Christians you would ever meet in your life. Like, ever. Like, I mean, devout to the point to where, you know, all he ever did was, like, read his Bible, all he ever did was pray. He was, like, super spiritual. And then something changed. I don't know what. Something clicked. And that version of Matthew went away. About you. It's definitely weird hearing his opinion of where I was because it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I definitely was very religious at one time. Um, he's clearly, you know, chosen his path and I, I respect and support it. You know, follow your heart and what you believe. That's, that's important. That's what I'm doing. Well, I'm not saying that you're pounding the ball. I'm saying that you're getting, you know, a nice two, three and a half. Show out there, dude. Yeah. Year start. We had a bigger crowd than we had last night. Oh yeah. yeah. Those harmonies really worked out. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I thought them up in the car the other day. You know, thought they might be a nice addition. Yeah, all the way through. Hey, I saw you in the crowd, man. Do you want to hit this? Oh, I'm, I'm good. Thanks, man. Come on, you sure? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 I'm good though. <laughs> hey, you guys rock. Yeah, yeah. My, name's, my name's Sarah and this is Charlie. We actually play music too. Nice to meet oh, you. Yeah. yeah. I'm Caleb. This is my, uh, my older brother, Matt. Nice to meet you. They call me. Yeah. Well, I figured as much. You guys look like twins. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we're about to go back to our place. You want to get the fuck out of here with us? Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. We're just down this we're way. The mushrooms. Mm, mushrooms. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know the thing is, is there's so many stories out there of musicians and artists, especially, that see and experience things like this because we are so adept to being open to new experiences. I saw that. So if you can be open to the other possibilities within your universe, you can create some beautiful art. <laughs> you might experience some fucked up shit too though. You know, there, there were a lot of great moments in the beginning, but I feel like a lot of things were stifled by some dishonesty. What's wrong with me that I got swept up in this? And how did we not, you know, see the, I don't know, glitches in his story? 
storyline or, or other signs. I think that Muslims, Christians, Jews, they're all praying to the same gods. They just have a different human concept of him. But um, aren't those different gods? Yeah, but like, what about all the people who are never introduced to Christianity? Is it fair that they go to hell when they don't even know what religion is? You believe in God, Caleb? Mm -hmm. You're going to heaven, Matthew. <laughs> no, I can't wait. <laughs> what do you think? What? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Do you have any beliefs? You know, I'm open to anything. You know, I was raised in the Christian faith, but I can't say either way. <laughs> so, what do you do? What did you do? No, what do you do? Oh, what do you do? Yeah, like for example, uh, I like to create anything that has meaning attached to it. So like uh, for with our music, I kind of see our music like time travel. Like we create this this meaning or this feeling attached to this song and it brings you, when you listen to it, it can bring you back and you feel that same emotion again. And it's um, the most magical thing. Let me go again. <laughs> <laughs> no, like for real, I mean it. Like it has to have meaning. If there's no meaning attached, then what's the point? I think we're all just perpetually always fucking around. <laughs> why, why do we do any of this? Why does anyone do anything? Because it has to mean something. Fuck. Okay. What? You guys should join Gash Cat. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I love it. That's our band. Mm hmm. Yeah? yeah sure. Yeah. Sweet. That sounds cool. There you go. Natural. Sarah was this feisty, bird-like woman. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Um, I loved her bird-like tendencies, tendencies, and I feel like a lot of times she did it to piss me off or scare me because she knew I was terrified of birds. It is what it is, I guess. It's just right when we started playing music, Matthew changed. I feel like when I was younger, I was kind of this arrogant punk in a lot of ways because I was so determined and tenacious to do things differently. Okay, A minor, okay. G, C, then. Yeah, I was doing like, in G, I was going in G, G major. Okay. It was mostly a good experience. It was a lot of fun at the beginning. Matthew is very um, gregarious, creative, fantastical guy who I still like very much, although we're not close anymore. Um, just immediately, we just got connected almost on a mental level. And I feel like immediately upon meeting and hearing each other's music, we all just immediately started collaborating. Matthew, what got you so into it, man? Dude, um, actually, Caleb's mom and I, or I mean, our mom, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she uh, gave it to us mm -hmm. as a gift. She had a whole, uh, she actually had a whole one-woman show. She was a wedding singer. Like the one oh. woman with her with her omnicord, I guess. That's so badass. I know, oh right? That's crazy. That's crazy. awesome. I guess she stopped around the time that she had fucking five daughters yeah, and decided that sisters. wasn't enough um, and had two more sons. She, you, seven kids? Seven, so yeah, yeah. Seven. I'm lucky for seven. I'm number six. Did they they had to stop at me because uh, you can't go past seven. Uh, okay. <laughs> wow. wow, that's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Here comes the bride. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 oh, slow down, buddy. Da, da, oh, stop. Da, 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 oh, no, you're reminding me of my mom. 
Stop. <laughs> I wonder if she would play like modern hits, or no. or if she would like do the when do she played like the eighties. I bet she played like eighties hits, like eighties pop that would hits. Be like, so like yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh my or she get it to where like. She could put a strap on it, and then she goes up and just shreds it on stage. <laughs> that would be so... That would be awesome. <laughs> what are those things, the, like the guitar piano things? What are those called? Uh, guitars. Yeah, guitars <laughs> and omni <laughs> omnicord tar. Omnicord tar. Omni tar, I guess. I bet you get used to like playing it like that. I know we just met, but I think we have our first million dollar idea. <laughs> <laughs> the omni play through Zeppelin The omni tar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> that would be legit. That's awesome. Black dog on the Omnicord. It seems like you had a really cool role model for your music. Yeah, she's all right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we come from a, like a long line of musicians, actually. Mm. Yeah. Sort of like Destiny. You know, I like I always say, I feel like music lives in your soul. And kind of it's generational. Flows in our blood. It's like Makes DNA. Sense. Yeah. Pass it on. The older I get, the more I'm kind of certain of it. Because people look at that stuff, and I don't mean to go crazy alien guy. That's not my intention. I just think that some people come from other parts of the universe. And you probably don't remember most of it. But your soul does. You know? Your mind does. And it will come, it will come back every single time. Okay, how, how do you know my name? And, and don't stop being creative. Keep painting. I want you to keep writing. I know that you're going to create something beautiful. Okay, bye. taught me long ago the ways of the chameleon. I always thought that Charlie was kind of a shapeshifter in a weird way, you know? He was kind of like a... He always referred to himself as like the chameleon. One of these. Oh, hell yeah. I think we could just keep this open. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. I, I hated it, I loved it, and I respected the hell out of him as well. Because he could be any person at any time like that. He was so good at it. He could like change his identity and one day he's got a massive mountainous beard and the next day he's this disco punk. You know, he's an anomaly. And I think he understands more about all of this than he'll ever lead on. If anyone does. More than Caleb, more than Jacob, for sure. And it, that breaks my heart because he, he is at a point in his life where he doesn't want to go back. When really I think he's at a point in his life where he doesn't know who the fuck he is. Uh, I'm just gonna let that go, you just riff on that. Okay.
pulling the wool over a lot of people's eyes, but even those who are working most closely with them, and that being sort of the magic of the band. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was the drugs. Maybe it was the booze. Who knows? But something special was happening, and as we connected and continued to collaborate, we really started to seek out different experiences and environments to record in. But yeah, I mean, we definitely, when we used drugs, you know, like LSD and mushrooms and things of that nature, it was all in the spirit of creation. It was never in the spirit of, let's get fucked up. It was like, let's, you know, they say you can't write and record and sing a beautiful song on this many hits of LSD. Let's do it. <laughs> and we did. Got away, got away from the day to day problem. Oh, yeah. Money, money, enough time to myself, time with my friends. I haven't spoken to my family in a while. I hope that they will right because I haven't seen them. Since last July uh, 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 take a while Damn, that was Hell awesome. Yeah. That was sick. Heck yeah. Yeah, man. That was sweet. Really appreciate you, Charlie. I appreciate you too, man. I don't know, man. Like, you, you don't get it. Like, I just felt like from the first time I met you, it was meant to be like we were supposed to meet. Let me say that again. I just, my whole life I felt caged and this is like the first time I felt truly free, you know? Let me tell you about this idea of mine. It's cool, okay. Well, that must be the the uh, the band captain on well, the intercom. Whatever. We're gonna get away and hit Sunset, Texas. Okay, my family manages an abandoned camp out there. So we should go record some music and see what happens. And uh, they say some really bad shit went down in the 80s, so. Oh shit. Might be haunted. Damn, yeah, dude, that sounds awesome. Rise and shine. <laughs> wakey, wakey. It's butt whooping time. You ready to go? No, dude. Oh, okay, well the, uh, the van's here, so uh, hurry up. Okay, <laughs> we don't have till Christmas. Truly believe. Had I not been like swayed by like such a presence, I would have undoubtedly gone in the direction. As a young man, I was fascinated with the thought of energy and how every part of us, every fucking fiber of our being is comprised of it. Everything around us in the universe is comprised of energy and matter. Like it's, it's the only thing that means anything. This morning my alarm woke me from this dream I was having. Then I tried to go back to sleep and dream the same dream. But then I couldn't sleep anymore. Solid. <laughs> you remember what you were dreaming about? No. You should try to write down your dreams. That's what I do. But you have to do it right when you wake up, otherwise you'll forget. Okay, I will. How do you know these dudes? Matthew didn't tell you? Yeah, he's our, he's our baby nephew. <clears throat> I'm, I, I'm actually a teenager. I'm not a baby. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was pretty much raised um, alongside Matthew and Caleb. Their, their older sister is my mother. One of the problems of going back there was about three years ago, one of the main cabins, the main cabin where we did all of our recording and had the bulk of this, these experiences burned to the ground mysteriously. I'm not even kidding you, like, I legit talk 
talked to one of the fire marshals, and he said they just legitimately couldn't explain it. It was just mysterious how the whole thing just kind of caught, went up in flames and burnt to the ground. Who's ready to make some magic happen? Oh, oh yeah. And the palace? This looks amazing. Where else do you make magic? Like, we arrived there in the morning. It was beautiful. Like, all this land looked gorgeous. You know, it was kind of surreal, super inspiring. Yeah. Is it just me? Yeah, it's like 10 degrees hotter outside. Um, so, pretty quickly we went inside and started setting up so we could record. You know, we were kind of planning on being there all night, maybe 12 hours. Immediately, immediately putting your hand, your fingers on the doorknob to this place, you knew something was not right. Alright, let me get some pictures real quick. So I believe that it really happened. I believe that um, there was something else going on there. This trailer is really cool. Really like it. Thanks, man. Glad to have you all out here. Hi, Caleb. But as soon as we started, like the minute we started playing, like the very first note, I remember hearing like banging on the outside of the house. Four, five, six. again feeling like the oldest piece of furniture in the room fire breathing from my from my throat for a change the sunlight shining over the furniture and painting the bedroom walls it's the most beautiful living color I've ever seen it cascades so such energy and emotion all over my body so when it leaves it reaches to my neck I feel an illumination overcome me. My skin starts to sing. Now I'm a portrait of John Lennon painted on paper with tongues. I am the greenest grass on the warmest day. I am the ant farms working harder than the rest. So I stand aside and observe. All of you achieve such mundane tasks so daily. And I feel uninspired. If I dare attempt, if I dare attempt to stretch out my arms in our little nest and undress you with all the warmth that I can muster, because my love is your energy. And on this beautiful afternoon, love, I need you to sing for me. Like to me, that day is when Matthew Narragan Sea was really like born, it became alive, because we weren't even trying to create a Mattis record or anything. Like, um, it was just that spark, that, that connection. We're, we eat what we're fed, and we grow the way we think we're supposed to. And it's not necessarily like I wanted any of this. Living some other dream. It's not like I welcomed it, but I... I I guess I encouraged it for sure. Old world, I can't explain a thing. The spark that just hit me, life's such a feeling, it's eating me up inside. Your smile and your posture is burning me up in my mind. I do have a very, very intense memory of like little girls chattering, kind of like when, when we got really loud during the song we were recording. All right. So how do you think that sounded? Sounded good to me. Yeah, I liked it. say anything because you're, you're gonna get offended. Caleb, what are you talking about? I'm not gonna get offended. I, it's, it's not that, it's, I, I, I don't, I don't feel like my opinion really matters, you know? 
Oh. Caleb, of course your opinion matters, dude. We just want to know what you think about the song. I, I just, I, I just feel weird. Okay. Like, weird how? I, I don't know, dude. I feel weird. You know, don't hate me. I just, I, I feel like something's, something's happening. Don't say that, man. Well, let's try to get comfy in this trailer tonight. I think about it too much. Not stupid. We just wanted to make a connection and record it amidst our music. Terrified. Was that like a bee on me? That watermelon turned out blues. I had a bug involving you. Um, that was like the very first line that I wrote in, in Alton House. It's totally about my brother. Like, totally. You know? That. We captured that last night when we were recording. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Did you not hear it? No, dude, I didn't hear anything. Dude, Caleb, listen. We made a fucking encounter with some sort of demon last night, dude. What? What are you talking we about, We need to have... Uh, there's some sort of demon or some shit in here with us, man. We need to have some sort of seance or ritual dude, to figure this shit out. Dude, it's like five. Fuck, Charlie. Oh. Charlie, wake up. Oh. Do you think your parents would let us stay here another night? Our... When we were recording last night, I, I captured this voice on the recorder. And there's something in this fucking trailer with us, man. Like something spiritual and something evil. We need to hit up Sarah, because she knows all about that medieval and paranormal shit, dude. Is it a ghost? No, dude, it's a fucking demon. No, oh, no, God. no, it is not a demon. Fuck off, Jacob. You like seances, right? Um, I, I wouldn't... I don't think they're oh, sh cool. Dude, I know this sounds crazy, guys. I know it's just fucking insane. I'm scared as fucking hell, but we have to figure what the fuck is in here with no. us. I'm gonna do that in a few hours. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and call Sarah. I mean, at that point, you're you're seeking of this like zest for discovery, and you discovered this. Holy shit! We have just connected with something. Hey, what's up? 
Hey, Sarah. All right, we just like encountered some sort of demon or something last night. Like, listen to this. I don't hear anything. All right. Well, I'll play it for you again when you get here. But do you know any like medieval chants or incantations or anything like that? What? Why? Yeah. Okay, because um, there's something in this fucking trailer. Like, we felt it the second we walked inside, this strange energy. How soon can you make it out here? Um, I don't know. I, I was just on a hike. I can be there as soon as possible, I guess. Okay, cool. Sweet. We'll see you soon. Um, we really need you out here. Oh, uh, can you bring, like, some candles and shit, too? Tonight's gonna be fucking wild. Sweet. Oh. You're just in time. What? <laughs> Tell me how ready for this? cold. <laughs> Let's do this. It can't be my baby. How cold. It can't be my baby. Tell me how cold. How come you can't be my baby? So long for you to be. I could never, never. So obviously, being a group of spiritualists, spiritualist musicians, we came to the conclusion that we should have a seance. Yeah, we had a little seance one night. We recorded um, a project that we call Gash Cat, and. We were just sort of telling scary stories and getting each other freaked out. The setting and ambiance was right for that. Never say goodbye like you, like you. But I remember, you know, going into it thinking, this is like at the top of the fucking list of stupid things you could do right now. Caleb, thank you for leaving us. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. And we took, what, two rolls of film, and not one of them developed. Okay. Everybody hold hands. Okay. Hell yes. Y'all ready? Yeah. Charlie, get your ass down here, dude. Nah, man. I'm staying away from that shit, because I believe in it's it. It's not worth trying, dude. Whatever. It's too late now. Okay, everybody close their eyes, and don't let go. Spirit, if you're here with us right now, Spirit, if you're here with us right now, we just want you to know that we are open to you. We mean no disrespect. If you're here with us, please feel free to communicate with us and move among us. Spirit, thank you. What the heck? Are you guys playing some kind of fucking game that isn't funny? Like, 
awakening was insane, and for some reason we thought we should follow him. Why can't you be my baby? Why can't you be coming back again? Sarah, 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 wake up, Sarah, wake up, there's somebody at the door, Sarah, Sarah, wake up, Sarah, come on. What's wrong? There's somebody at the door. Nobody's here, we have the full weekend, come here, it's okay. the fuck? Oh. Ah, 
Ah, shut up! Fuck. Last time I saw Jesus, he was talking to Elvis Presley. He was mimicking all the zebras and laughing at how he sees us. Oh. I mostly came at night, like when I was up, I would often stay up pretty like right. That's when I would, I want to say heard it, but you never really heard it. It kind of came on like a whisper. And before the words like truly resonated with you, it was completely gone. It felt like you had woken up from like a dream, like you kind of drifted off to this other world. Hey, can I see your ID? Just trying to find a shooting star. I'll be right back. Are you good? Matthew. I don't. I don't think so. Nose is bleeding. Big deal. Oh, uh, he, put, he was probably picking at it too much. Um, I used to do that when I was a kid. Are you good, man? Yeah, sorry guys. That happens all the fucking time. <laughs> hmm. So, uh, when did you become a stargazer? When he became a Christian. <laughs> that literally doesn't make any sense at all. No, I'm sure they coincide somehow. I mean, there's, there's gotta be something out there, right? Does there? I guess there doesn't have to be. But it kind of helps knowing that there is. Or Thinking believing that there, that there is. Yeah. yeah. It does help. I mean, it's comforting to know that you know, you're not the only one that feels a certain way. And that there's somebody out there always listening or watching you. Hmm. My mom's always well. watching. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. But you'll know that when you look at the stars, you're actually seeing old light. Mm. It took millions of years to get here. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Charlie, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about it until like a couple months ago, okay? So, Charlie, I appreciate your knowledge and you sharing it with us. <laughs> it's intimidating to think about. Like, that one right there, like, we're seeing it how it was millions and millions of years ago. I can't even, like, fathom. I don't even know what I ate for lunch last week. <laughs> yeah. Time about it, a weird concept. Think about it from, like, the other side, too. Like, if there's someone else just staring out at us, and they'll never know us, because by the time that we've figured each other out, one of us is going to be dead. That's creepy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully someone's still alive to tell the story. 
somebody's just been peeping on us our whole lives. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think like they're all totally aware, but they're waiting for us to be completely aware mm -hmm. and for us to be mentally prepared. And I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> we just got to listen. The stars are singing a song. <laughs> it's deep. That's very, that's very, very deep of you, Charlie. <laughs> It's the medication. <laughs> Is it setting in now? No. Who? <laughs> Who? Who is out there? That's the stars singing to us. <laughs> the stars make all the music. Yeah. I don't hear anything. <laughs> and the proximity effect is the effect of when you go through a almost spiritual or highly energetic, creative, connected, like event, whatever the meaning is behind it. Everybody walks away from the situation feeling a little bit different. Cowboy walks into a bar. No, he's not like the other. When things started getting really crazy, and then, you know, I started feeling different and affected on a different level, like on a more emotional level, and then started getting nosebleeds being kind of affected on a physical level. That's when I met Arvin. Okay. He approached me at a show, actually, and he called himself Arvin. He told me straight out of the gate, I'm not going to tell you my real name, but he just said he knew that he felt like he was supposed to reach out to me. He literally, I kid you not, appeared into my world out of thin air. Flip ahead into the unknown. I'm not going to tell you my real name, but I know I'm supposed to reach out to you. Alright. What can I get you, man? Oh, can I just have a shot? Yeah. You can call me Arvin. It's nice to meet you, Arvin. My name's Matthew. Come to my house. Not now. I have something to tell you, but not here. Have a few drinks with my wife and me tomorrow. Oh, hi! You must be Matthew. Arvin's told me so much about you. Please, come inside. All right. Oh, you too. Please, uh, take your shoes off. We've just jumped through the carpets. Of course. Thank you. I'll get you something to drink. We have water, soy milk, and wine. You like white wine, right? Yes, I love it. I'm fine, thank you. Who are you? Oh, that's my friend Blake. I figured I'd bring him along. Sit down. I like your mustache. Oh, uh... Thank you. Thank you. You met my wife, Laura. Spoke to her at the door. Yes, we have. It was very nice to meet you, Laura. Oh, it's always a pleasure, and do come back any time. Come with me, Matthew. I want to take you somewhere. Okay.
Now, what I'm about to tell you, you cannot tell anyone. Okay, I won't. Promise? Yeah, I promise. Good. And I will find out if you do. I want you to be careful, but very aware. I know that you have made a connection to another world, and it's okay. Similar encounters have happened to all of us. Some of us are just more aware of it than others. Your friends can only see what their minds are willing to handle. Those of us that are more perceptive get a taste of a greater universe. Imagine if you could see through the universe. Imagine if you could see the tear in the sky. What the f- <laughs> If you are open to the possibilities in your universe, you can experience something greater, a deeper understanding. You can make some beautiful art, too. They're called the Greys. Look into them. Not all the information is real, but if you keep digging, you will find some real truth. Matthew, you were marked a long time ago, and you are not alone. Look into your consciousness. Try and remember those strange moments and nights. It can be difficult, but I want you to really try. I, I do see something. <laughs> You're going down the rabbit hole. Pointed things out in the sky that I have never seen before and have never seen again. What he showed me in a whole other world that is out there that you couldn't even explain it. As you begin to explain it, you yourself know you're fucking crazy. <laughs> I was little the first time I saw the blue light. I was floating in liquid and the little ones were staring down at me. I chose to embrace them. Like, little spirits? They're not spirits, nor ghosts. They are energy. We're all energy. They can take multiple forms, even the fears of little children. Do not be fearful, Matthew. Be open. What do they want? We can never fully understand them. They can never fully understand us either. They seek the same understanding from us that we seek from them. We're both fascinated by each other. They're just far superior. The universe does not revolve around humans, Matthew. There are other worlds. Past the stars. We were out a long time. Uh, we should get going. 
Matthew's going to stay here tonight. Yeah. You may go. I, I guess I'll pick you up in the morning? Yeah, that'll work in the morning. Oh, you didn't show me your drawing. <gasps> it's ravishing. Can I keep it? Goodbye. Bye now. There's your sleeping bag. Oh, cool. What does that look like to you? That, that's a UFO, right? Exactly. I took this picture myself. Oh my god. That's crazy. I've been taken 27 times. And time doesn't work up there the way it works here. For them, time is... infinite. There's no beginning or end. It's all just happening simultaneously. Everyone's been taken. Most people are just too idiotic to know it. <laughs> Oh, how can you explain that? I... I can't. You're damn right you can't. I used to have more, but they healed them right off my body. Getting rid of the evidence. Laura, get the boy some more wine. Oh, sure thing, Arvin. Oh my gosh, it's been... It's been crazy meeting you. I'm gonna write so many songs tomorrow. You have no idea. This has been insane. Mm, that's fine. Remember, Matthew. Nothing is coincidental. Everything that happens is on purpose. Uh, but he told me that he was convinced, but convinced, um, based on the things we had talked about, you know, throughout our conversations, that I had been marked long ago, and if I dug into that, and into my consciousness, I might remember things, like these memories were coming back to me, and it was crazy, I mean, I remember as a young kid, um, laying in bed, and seeing this what I can only describe as a skinless person sitting at the edge of the bed, just staring at me. I think, like, it was always Matthew and I. Like, in our, in our mind, like, when we first started the band, like, we were always going to be on that band together. So, what'd you think about that church service? Honestly, dude, it was refreshing. I needed that. Like, it was, um... I don't know. I think after this week, it was just, it was nice, <laughs> you know, for yeah, me. Yeah, totally, least. man. I don't want to like ruin your moment or anything, but I just feel like that whole thing's pushing me further away, you know? You just go in there and everyone's waving their hands in unison and they all look the same and dress the same and the candles and the, I, I don't know, dude. It just seems so like artificial and fake. I get that. No, you don't. No, I do. I do. It's a, it's a weird environment. But it, it's really, it's not about that. It's like, it's like a, it's a public expression of faith. You know? Yeah. You know, the other day I, I prayed for the first time in like ten years, like for real. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Cause I can tell that something's been off with you and I just wanna, you know, you can, you can talk to me about it. Nothing's happening. Um, have you thought about seeing someone? Like, a therapist? Yeah, yeah, sure. No. Okay. Uh, well, y you don't have to be like crazy or no, something. Why would you even mention that, you. dude? It, it was just an idea, okay? I heard someone mention it the other day and I figured that it might be might be a good idea. 
It, it doesn't matter. It? it doesn't matter. Whatever, dude. You know, I was reading. I was uh, reading this book of sailor poems the other day, and I came across uh, this thing I really liked. It's called "The Arrogant Sea." And I don't know. I just liked it. I liked the way it sounded. The arrogant sea. The arrogant sea. Matthew in the arrogant. Matthew in the arrogant sea. Matthew in the arrogant sea. That's I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. I think. I think we just found our new band name. Like you and me. Yeah. Heck <laughs> yeah. Matthew in the arrogant sea. I dig that. <laughs> That a lot. Me too, man. I've been exposed to so much darkness and so much just evil that my faith in God is devout because He's the reason that I'm here today talking to you about it. Just uh, this record label, they're talking about signing us. No, they do not. <laughs> What'd they say? Uh, they just said we're gonna talk about it later, but meeting these guys is kismet, man. It's gonna change our lives forever. Damn. <laughs> hey, um, can somebody take me to school in the morning? Morning. I I got classes. Yeah, I I, I got you. <laughs> God, record label, dude. Oh, that's crazy. Why are you sitting there? I don't know. I just need to be grounded right now. But yes, I had a lot of encounters um, where I can describe that same blue light. I'm not really sure what happened outside of getting out of my car at seven in the morning, wondering why I'm still sitting in my car at seven in the morning.
played um, in Houston and Austin, San Antonio, and then we came home. We were going on this mini tour to impress these people that we were supposed to be getting signed to. Each show, nobody was there. So we were like, what the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, why, why are these people here? And what? Matthew would tell us, like, long story short, he would tell us, you know, or they couldn't come, or, or they could. So from the outside looking in, it looked a lot like a fabricated story early on. I'm a little distorted today. My body seems to be bending without any movement. The bones crack like floorboard on balconies. With the party shakers and the party rumblers rallying in the gates of hell, a well-constructed sentence won't keep me from where I'm going. Down the spiral staircase with broken, bleeding thermometer and peeling the fingers like little skin. And alas, we make it into the belly. Loud music and riots for Christ. And I, I'm the porcupine here. In the rumbling, get too close and you'll get a prick closer and I will stab you closest for the winner. So the four gives sin. So pull the pack from my shirt and pretend that I am Elvis with one light and bottle cap glasses. I could be the devil. Been, uh, he's been talking to that record label some more. Uh, apparently they are interested in signing us and doing all, all this kind of crazy stuff for us. Like it's a whole deal. Wow. Uh, they're connected to, uh, to EMI, which is like that British record label. Like they, were, they worked with the Beatles. <laughs> and like I don't even know how that's possible, but um, everything's looking upward. That'd be incredible. They're offering six million dollars. Six million dollars. Million, yeah. What? They want us to move out to California and record an album and do this whole American tour and everything. And it's just crazy. And yeah, Matthew's thinking about moving up there and writing a novel, the whole nine yards. What about us? I guess we're supposed to come with him. You want to join? Uh. Nah, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I think I've had enough creepy bullshit for one week. <laughs> oh, us too. But, I think uh, we've had enough. You know, we're a little scared, but curious. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, let's meet up with Maddie and Jacob sometime soon and uh, glue all of this together. Sound good? Okay. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Love you too, Caleb. Can you dim the lights? Charlie, I didn't get an I love you. I love you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Love you too. We welcome only positive energy. We mean no disrespect. We only wish to connect with you if you're here. Please feel free to communicate.
3.33 and tell me what we're doing here again. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like we're, we, where we were sent, right? <gasps> Sarah, 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 oh shit. Sarah, Sarah, oh my god. Uh, Can you move? Uh, come on, okay, we gotta go. It's time to go. She uh, wore up, 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 up. Come on. a black satin come gown on. that sent stars down my spine. Talking about kids? I. Okay, there's this girl. It's just a girl I've been seeing, and you know, whatever. <laughs> is, uh, is it serious? I mean, yeah, I guess it's getting a little bit serious now. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty crazy. If, uh, if you guys have kids, what would you name them? Uh, well, she. If we have kids, she is dead set on all of them. Really? What if it's a boy? Uh, Oliver, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. I'm gonna write a song about your future kid. It's gonna be legendary. What if it's not a boy or a girl? Uh, it's definitely gonna be a boy. Trust me. I'm psychic. Just you wait and see. We just a slight chance of girl. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, dude. What's up, guys? The stars are aligning, y'all. Oh, man, it's crazy. Oh, shit. I actually think I'm getting a call right now. From who? Oh, shit. I think you know who. I'll take it real quick. Who exactly is he getting a call from? Uh, probably one of the record label dudes, I guess. About what? Uh, Matthew always walks away. Whenever he gets a call from them, he uh, says that we're too attached to the idea. Uh, but apparently, we're just a couple days away from signing. So, hey, what happens to your neck? I ran into a telephone pole. She ran into a telephone pole. <laughs> no, we're actually looking at places in California before all this goes down. No, we're looking at a house in Denton. California? Hell yeah! That's where Matthew's going. Y'all should totally come. Uh, maybe. I can't. I'm still in high school. Come on, man. Can't you ask your grandparents? I don't think they want me to leave Texas. Why are y'all going anyways? We're not all going there. Oh, hey. Hey. How'd it go? Oh, and it was all right. I just, I'm just getting pretty impatient to see it all in writing. So is this $6 million legit? Caleb said $6 million. Well, Matthew told me $6 million. Yeah, I mean, it should be legit. That's what they keep telling me. So. It would change our lives forever if it actually happened. Maybe it's just their pitch. You know, maybe it's going to be more reasonable once we sign the contract. Well, what's unreasonable about six thousand or six million dollars? I mean, stranger stuff has happened to smaller bands. Uh, Charlie and Sarah said that they were uh, thinking about moving out to California when everything signed. Oh shit! What part? Probably San Francisco. Oh yeah, yeah. They want us to record an album in the Bay Area, right? Oh, hell yeah, yeah, that's what they told me. I really hope so, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this whole record deal thing. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, it's real all right. It's definitely gonna happen. I know it all seems kind of up in the air right now, but trust me, it will happen. Just have a little faith. Exactly. Let's get the fuck out of this town, start over, clean slate. Slow down, dude. I mean, I can ask my parents if I can come. No, I mean, no, no, no. I, I don't think we should romance. This. My, my, my. My, my, my. In that 
early version of Matthew Narragansi, or Gash Cap, whatever you want to call it. It was so difficult to communicate. And it was difficult for me to go to them and be completely direct. It was always so hard to be completely direct with that group. And I don't mean to be the guy that, I'm not blaming them, because you know, I was the band leader and I fully take responsibility for every action and decision I've ever made. I actually communicate with my band now. I actually talk to them. I actually, you know, I made, I was terrible about that back in those days. And I, I do have regrets on that level because I didn't want to ruin the purity of what we were doing with the bullshit of the business. And so I kept them out of it. And that absolutely was my downfall in a lot of ways. Charlie? Wow, you actually answered. Yeah, of course I did. First off, uh, just, I want to say I'm sorry. Have you seen all the shit that people are saying about us? No, what are you talking about? You know that Denton music blog, We Shot JR? Yeah. Well, I mentioned to them everything that you told us, and everything that we were planning on doing, and they wrote this article. They called it Matthew and the Arrogant Sea, the biggest local band you've never heard of. But then, all these anonymous users started calling bullshit on the whole EMI deal, saying that you just made it up, and that it was a big publicity stunt on my part. And now there's a second article up after we traced your contacts, and I'm trying to explain everything, but, you know, it's just getting worse, and they're talking shit about Sarah, too, and I... Dude, dude what do you mean you traced my contacts? We traced your contacts, Matthew. You know, the ones that never existed in the first place. Shit, dude, just hold on. I'm gonna call you back. I'm pulling up the article right now. Were you lying to us? Or was this just some sort of weird no, delusion? No, of course I'm not lying to you, dude. This is real. Then what the fuck is going on, man? I don't know why dude, I believe- I told you I'm gonna call you back, man. Dude, I, plus I've been meaning to tell you the same, the same thing has happened to multiple artists with the same contacts with EMI, man. It's not just me. I don't know about that. Charlie, what? Were you pretending to be me? There's literally quotes on here from me, dude. What the f what the fuck is happening, man? This <laughs> I didn't even know this is possible. Dude, why would you? Why the fuck would you want to agree to an interview when the deal isn't even final, man? What the hell? You literally fucked us on this. Yeah, yeah. All this is totally my fault. Yeah. Okay. Into drama, watching it all unfold. Anyone on the other end, the, the numbers he was dialing that were apparently these EMI people, the numbers that he would show on his um, phone weren't really going anywhere. And then when it didn't happen, and the deal was like apparently off the table now, um, everybody kind of went nuts. Like, did he make that up, or did he um, lie? still own up to it because that's the right thing to do I know Charlie will never do that I know that and I made peace with that a long time ago and I still love him even though he's kind of an asshole he is my uncle I love him dearly um, and it's hard to tell somebody no man you're, you're, you're lying to me and then them say no I'm not it was like awful Cole it was the, one of the worst experiences of my life. And the first time that I really feel like I experienced like true rejection. I don't think that he, I don't think that he truly realized what he did. No one was more manipulated than Matthew himself. Like, you know, I, like I can't diagnose it. I'm not a psychiatrist, um, but it's, it's almost like you don't, you're so caught, either you're so caught up in a lie that you can't realize that it's a lie anymore, or you just don't even realize the first lie to begin with. I will always love him, I'll always respect him, and I'll always give him the benefit of the doubt. But I'm also not an idiot. We thought it was sociopathic, because he also didn't show any remorse. So, it's really difficult kind of looking back on all of it, and feeling any remorse for it, because all I did was communicate an opportunity for us, and then it fell apart. I wish I could say it was this grandiose, like, 
publicity stunt because I think that might be cooler. And a pathological and compulsive liar who tries to dress it up in the mystique of his creative output. I send this to his face and it gets, it goes nowhere. I'm not mad at him about it. I, I really, I'm not. I don't think he, I don't think he gets it. <laughs> it makes me wonder if it's like a lot of ego. Like he liked that people were talking about him and that's mm -hmm. why he lied or that's why he changed is because he's like hey if i'm this person then i'm super super interesting to talk about to most people when something doesn't come together the way you hope they say well that's a lie that isn't true that's not the case i can't rationalize it because it just didn't come together in a rational way i absolutely never told a lie to anyone in the band regarding like the record deal or any of the things that we're really talking about. Matthew doesn't realize the damage that his lies have caused. I've never felt like I needed to apologize to any one of them. And I'm not going to start now. I heard a lot of different opinions. My opinion was Matthew was my brother. It was just unfortunate that how it all played out. And I think the reason that I've struggled throughout most of my career with that weird stigma is because of how everything unfolded with We Shot JR. And what really sucks about all of that, because I wish I could own up to that. I really do. I wish I could, but I had nothing to do with it. Nothing. <laughs> I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know if I wanted to let anger lead me. I didn't know if I wanted to let emotion lead me or rationality. And I had to just dip out of Denton. I think that I know for a fact there's plenty of people in this town that thought I had lost my damn mind. Um, that's fine. Hello? What? The fuck? Hey. Oh, hey. You know you're supposed to say hello when you answer a phone? Yeah, I know that. Hey, so, uh, do you want to go to this art gallery thing with me tonight in Dallas? Awake with ferocity, her fists are trembling with every step towards the kitchen counter. I spot my bride on the balcony as she lingers and views the city in the distance. For the Mother. biggest knife in the drawer and slitting my own throat and bleeding to death on the new linoleum. There's only so much a man can take in a safe plastic world. Damn it. Hey, you alright? I don't know, man. I I can't explain it. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm feeling things and remembering things. I'm just thinking about things differently now. Hey, it's gonna be okay, Matthew. In here, right now, nothing else matters. I don't know, man. It's just, let's go to the center of the universe. When 
I was younger, I thought the universe was one way for sure. Like, that's how it was. Now I'm just more confused than ever because it's not fucking like that, dude. It's... Every time I try to believe in somebody or something, I always fucking break my heart. Every time, dude. I just, I can't. It's hard to believe in anyone now. It's like, I don't even think I like people anymore. You know, I've always thought of you as a warrior. You're like, you're like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> don't give up, man. Are you kidding me, dude? I'm just getting started, but it's just hard, dude. It's hard because it feels like it's me. It's like, I always ask myself, is it me? Because everyone fucking leaves and it has to be me. I have to be the reason. Hey, tell me another one of your spooky stories. I was sitting on an orbit floating off in space When your pretty purple top hat hit me in the face Hit me in the face So, this next song is called Hey Josh. It goes out to my brother Caleb. His middle name is Josh, and uh, he's the real talent in this family. Here we go. Like a sense of 
loyalty to him or just, you know, I, I wished him well. I wanted him to do well. I didn't want to, like, I was worried about what might happen if he felt sort of abruptly cut off from everyone or really cruelly treated by everyone. So there was a sort of gentle stepping around him and slowly withdrawing. Can you write me out of this one? Thank you. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay, man. I love you. <laughs> no, that's a pretty, pretty sweet little dedication you made out there. I love you too. Where have you been? It's been more than two months. Ugh, it hasn't been that long. It has. All right, mm. I'm sorry. You literally just vanished. Yeah, man. We were worried. I'm fine, don't worry about me, I'm okay. Just come over to my house later tonight and we can have a few drinks and talk about it. Um, Matthew, can I, can I talk to you a bit? Yeah, sure. I love it. Oh, yeah. In the film, like, there's a time where I disappear and everyone's like, where did you go? And I, what I really wanted to say is, where did you go? Because this is when I saw you with your real skin. This is when I saw you without the fucking mask. And that was the hardest part. That's the hardest part of being in music, is everyone wears a goddamn mask. It was that experience that made me hate the music industry. It was that experience in this movie that's referenced that made me go, I'm gonna do it my way and I don't fucking care. Who thinks otherwise? I don't care who tells me I can't. I might have to take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, dude, speaking of, uh, have, how's Charlie doing? Have you heard from him at all? Uh, yeah, man, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, Charlie and Sarah had a, had a, had a bit of a falling out after everything happened. I, uh... I think he just he just needs to find his own path now, you know. He's got a. I think yours was just overshadowing this bit. All of ours, really. <laughs> of course, man. All right as things start going my way and things are looking up, everyone fucking leaves right when it's going good. It's like ever since we came back from sunset, I've been fucking cursed. It was like something about those weird encounters we had, dude. I feel like they've, they've all fucked with us individually, but they've really fucked with me, dude. And I know, I know it's real, but everyone just thinks I'm crazy. No one believes me. Well, maybe, maybe they're like your guardian angel or something. I don't know. No way, dude. No way. I've literally had random people come up to me off the streets and know my name and shit about me. No, 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 no. You're just, you're overthinking everything. Man. You're fine. You seem fine. You really think so? Yeah, man. Yeah, you're doing great. Because it doesn't feel like it, man. Like, this, these experiences are real, and everyone acts like I'm fucking crazy. Okay, okay, well, talk to me about it. What are, what exactly are you referring to? I just did, dude. We've been through this. Okay, well, I forgot. Relax, okay? Whatever, dude. <laughs> You guys want to hear a dream that I had? Uh oh. <laughs> no, come on, who wants to hear it? For real. It's, uh, I, so I remember it pretty vividly. I was, uh, it was in this forest, and it was this empty, ominous looking forest. There isn't much there, just like a few uh, rows of church pews and some trees. And I remember, uh, I remember feeling like this fever come on, and then I saw this astronaut, like, appear over this, this sea of bearded gentlemen. And uh, the astronaut was like holding a little bunny rabbit. Oh, that's it? And then I woke up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty badass. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And um, I mean, I didn't want to leave, but uh, I've been writing like a lot of new songs lately with this sort of uh, like whimsical approach. I think it stems a lot from those like weird encounters that we had. There's a lot of really intense energies out there. Like, some, there's beautiful, passionate, surreal energies beyond Earth, beyond in different galaxies that these humans can't 
even comprehend or put into reality. I don't know, all, all of that and the encounters and everything have really inspired me a lot. And I just, I've just been writing a lot of new songs. Like, I can't stop writing. I think we should make a pop record. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a couple half-written songs that I like, so maybe we could collaborate. Hell yeah. Or something, you know, my Lennon to your McCartney. <laughs> That'd be perfect. I actually um, have a song that I'm working on, if you want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Cool. It's not finished yet, but... Got a brand new hairdo And a new pair of shoes Dressed to please you I put on my best shirt and my shiniest tie. Travel thousands of miles, never yearning a smile. Just to please you, just to please you. That's all I have so far. It's so. good. It's cute. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, seriously, it's, it's really nice. Thank you. Oh, that's Charlie. Hey. Hey, dude. Sorry I never called you back. It's just been really hectic recently. Yeah. I'm actually, uh, I miss you, man. I'm jamming with Sarah and Caleb right now. We're thinking about making some new music. Are you doing okay? I've just been confused. I don't feel like I have anybody to blame, except for... Me? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't even care about the whole fucking thing anymore, you know? Lost in my work, exploring a sonic wilderness in its purest digital form. Right on, dude. Honestly, because of the contradictions and the things that were your fact versus our fact versus the facts, whatever the situation was, I just had to shut it off and not analyze it because I didn't want it to be you doing that. Honestly, I'm grateful for what went down. Like, it's, it's made me a better person. Like, ugh. there's plenty of assholes out there, dude, but we're not all that bad. Constantly uh, second guessing myself and don't even know it's real anymore. And I don't know. Man. There's been a strange chain of events, and it's all linked back to what happened at sunset. <laughs> I don't know about that. My uh, positive spin on it is just that you were uh, trying to get us excited, motivated, connected, whatever, whatever the reason. And, uh, Speak your mind. Well, I think what started as a small thing snowballed into a situation that you couldn't control. It definitely snowballed, but on a different level. Like, however the rug was pulled out from underneath us, dude, I don't know, but I do know one thing. It was real. I can say that with certainty. For sure. I feel like we're all growing from this, dude. You've shown me this wondrously theatrical version of myself, and man, there, honestly, there's really no one else with a mind like yours. We need to expand our universes and create together. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea for me. I'm gonna go. All right, dude. I'll see you. I mean, I'll talk to you later. Schopenhauer, a pessimistic philosopher, Bye. had a theory of human relationships that was about porn lines, and he used that as the metaphor. And what he said was that in love and in relationship, whether that be with our families, our spouses, our friends, we are all of us on this earth because we are so uncomfortable with our emotions. We are all of us like porcupines who are out on a cold winter's night. 
they get cold um, and, and, and they need to huddle together for warmth. They crave connection and they crave warmth. So they come together and then they prick each other <laughs> because they have these horrible spines and it's painful. And so in order to avoid the pain, they retreat and then they get cold. And so they come together and then they get spined and so they retreat and they get cold. Are you gonna tell him, Sam? I'm working on it. It's gonna crush him if you don't tell him. I don't. I know. I've got it under control. You don't understand. He's 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 difficult to break things to. It was very confusing and aggravating time. Sauerkraut's just one of those things, you know. Either you love it or you hate it. Oh, you mean Liberty Cabbage? Wait, what? Ignore him. He thinks he's smarter than you. Well, I'm a history buff. <laughs> Sauerkraut's pretty good, though. <clears throat> what do you think? Oh my god, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Is it uh, about anyone special? Like Samantha? <laughs> maybe. I knew I, it. I, I didn't say yes, I said maybe. Okay. <laughs> When's the wedding? <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm glad you guys didn't move to California anyway. My parents won't let me go. Well, we still might be going. For real? Yeah, after the wedding. <laughs> oh. No, he's not going anywhere. He, uh, we have this new record coming out, and um, it's getting looked at by some record labels, and it, it's gonna actually happen. Oh, uh, another? Record label? Yeah, man. Okay, uh, is, is this one real? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's real. Trust me. I promise, dude. I'm a man of my word. All right. If you say so. See, there's nothing to worry about. Sure. Hey, Annie, don't shoot me down. No, not that way. I rode my broken bicycle just to see your face. Um, so that was kind of fun to do that, and that's, that's why I'm so happy that record was received so well. Because it really was, and that's what people don't know. It was the record that kind of saved the band from a really dark place. So we had a lot of people collaborating on that album, um, so there's a lot of props to go out. Just, you know, Matthew and I, we created the foundation of, um, of all of those songs. Um, but we almost always collaborated with the guys and kind of branched out and did something different with it. Uh, Matthew had an idea for what he wanted it to look like, and I tried to try a few different sketches out, and that was what he liked. It smells like a vinyl record. It's now available. We have a record available on vinyl. Take out that vinyl, Caleb. Nova Post to vinyl. That's a vinyl. There's a spaceman on it. Look at that. We have a vinyl record, guys. Uh, my name is Jonathan Osasso. My name is Jacob Gray. Matthew Gray. John Gillespie. Caleb Gray. Harold Las Vegas. <laughs> if you can't trust each other in that, in that group, in that band, then you, you have nothing. We had an amazing thing. When we started Matthew and Arrogancy, we had an amazing group of musicians who were passionate about the band, passionate about the future, and wanting to make this thing work for the long haul. But mm -hmm. one by one, his lies kicked us out. Most of my life, and I laugh at it, has been dedicated to doing this. And I've, I've lost a lot of people that I, I cared for deeply over time because of my dedication to it. And I am, I'm very sorry for that. Like I really am, like I really am. I wish there was a way to have ended it in a regard that we could have all stayed close. But just know like all of this has been for them. All of it. I don't think I can say anymore. Hey, are, are, are you awake? Yeah. 
them right here. When was the last time you talked to mom or dad or like our sisters or something? I don't know. It's been a minute. Does, doesn't that make you feel like weird or guilty or something? I mean, sure, sometimes, but like I, I chose this life, dude. Don't get me wrong, I love my family, but I'm lost in this life. Oh, why can't we have both? Oh, Caleb, we can, we do. No, 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 we don't. Dude, I... I can't keep doing this. <laughs> what can't keep doing what, dude? This is the dream. It's finally, like, it literally is finally fucking happening, man. We're, we're about to go on this big California tour, dude. This is... This is it. I don't think I can go, dude. Yes, you can. No, I, I can't. I've got to make some really big decisions soon, dude. You know I'm getting married, right? No, I fucking forgot. Can you stop and, and be serious, please? Dude, you can't fucking be doing this right now, dude. This is our band. No, 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 no. This is, this is your... Your brainchild. Dude, it's okay? been ours since the beginning. Okay, well, then maybe I need to just restart, okay? <sighs> Why does everyone leave? not the easiest to work with in the world, Matthew. You know. Neither are you, but you're my fucking brother. Are you fucking kidding me? This is our- th I have stuck through everything with you. No, you fucking have it. That's fucking bullshit, dude. You leave every time just like Charlie. And why do you think Charlie left, Matt? You fucked with his mind. And, and, and you're, you're vague about everything and then nothing ever happens? I don't even fucking recognize you anymore, dude. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me, man. Dude, we're, li we're literally about to go on you tour with Midlake. Fucking your Midlake! Your entire life pretending like you did nothing wrong and, and, and blaming everyone else for Dude. everything. Okay, I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying I'm not gonna glue together your pieces anymore, okay? I'm not gonna do it. <sighs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you, dude. I've often wondered, especially with certain people, if if I was the reason. Like a lot of people that played with me in the past, after they played with me, they would just stop playing music. And I didn't know, I could never rationalize that. Remember, Matthew, nothing is coincidental. Everything that happens is on purpose. What the fuck is that? coming from Shut up! 
Why did I yell Mr. Seth O'Neill? We're out here as angry kid. And then I just remember like opening my eyes. And then I, at that point only, did I actually attempt to read what was on this envelope. And on that envelope, I kid you not, and I swear to every guy out there on that envelope, the only thing that was on there was He bailed me out of jail. What? You were in jail? Yeah. Would you like an edible? Yeah, sure, I guess. Why, why were you in jail? No, oh, it doesn't matter. Stupid shit. <laughs> well, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm really good. I'm uh, sober a couple weeks now. Really? Really, really. So, Matthew, why are you here? Well, everyone thinks I'm crazy, but they're all wrong. Hmm. Do you have something to show me? <sighs> yeah. Um, I had this strange experience. Well, I guess it was more of like an encounter. A couple nights back, uh, it ended with me finding this envelope taped to the outside of my win window. Hmm. And what was inside? There's just these coordinates. Hmm. Of course. Follow them. I've received many invitations in this form, although now mostly by phone. Remember what I said. Be careful, but very aware. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Oh, you must go. Yeah, I don't know, Arvin. <laughs> they will lead you deeper. <laughs> for a second, won't you?
Ended with a note with coordinates to, to here. And that's been like something that's really. It was essentially, I had like this very strange out of body experience back in, it would have been years ago, 2010, 2012, something like that. And the note ended with, I mean, I was, the only way I could describe it was it was like this dream. But it ended with a note that was taped on my window on the inside when I was the only one in that house. And it can, I'm not even joking you when I tell you, like I still get like shaky thinking about it. The coordinates led here. I just thought that might, I just wanted to share that because that's partially why I've always been so fascinated by that's interesting. the history and the, the stories behind the Nike. And then as a young man, I have this strange encounter that I can't really describe in a very you know authentic way that's not going to sound a bit out there but it ended with trying to lead me here as a young man at that time it it kind of freaked me out a little bit 
And so as I got older, that's when the fascination just started like engulfing me. Why? So you know? I look at it. What language is it in? What, what type of handwriting? What kind of paper? What did you do with it? You put it in the baggie and seal it up? Yeah, yeah. It's just in a baggie. The original note was in a baggie that got sealed up, but it was damaged in a flood that happened in not that house, but the house right after. Hello? Hey. Hey, man. How's the worship pastoring going and whatnot? Oh, it's going great. I'm loving it. I'm really happy. Uh, that's not why I called you. I actually uh, I have some news. What? We're having a little baby girl. So, you were wrong. What was I wrong about? You weren't psychic. We're gonna name her Olive. Dude, that's awesome, man. I'm really happy for you. But, you know, I was still kind of right. <laughs> well, tell that to the judge, okay? Who's the judge? Me. Oh, yeah. Hey, dude, can I just call you back? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll uh, talk to you later, brother. Love you. Yeah, love you too. I have an odd one for you. The other side of this building, you can see I don't take too good of care of my lawn. I like it. <laughs> I've been here 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I was. Right here. That's it. I'm going to use the shovel. Mark the outer edge of the circle. Make sense? Yeah. And it was dusty rock. It was a hot afternoon. It's kind of dusty. This Johnson grass was uptight. I stood back. I got back off of it. And dust double picked it. And the wind. Went around the base of that tree. So the whole yard it could do something with. Right here around this tree, it goes in a circle. Huh. Lasts for 15 seconds or so, and then dissipates. And I took that as a signal. Uh, who's ever watching was telling me, "Keep going." Yeah. Mm. It's always something you know. Ever growing on the vine You can't please everyone Someone's always left behind It's a dance for sure Knowing which way to sway Yourself in it out This one goes out. <laughs> this this is for the cast here. Cole, Tanner, and everyone involved. This is an oldie. 
So forgive us if we aren't our sharpest, but it's for y'all. Stomp battle beast. And in that moment. 